Hello to everyone, my name is Luis Montalo and I'm going to talk to you about promising evidence of antipsychotic efficacy without dopamine D2 receptor binding. I'm a math student at the Universidad Católica Santiago de Guayaquil and here are my Facebook, Twitter and YouTube accounts so you can follow me and watch the other videos I uploaded. So let's start. Introduction. Definitions. Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a serious mental illness that affects how a person thinks, feels, and behaves. Schizophrenia may result in some combination of hallucinations, delusions, and extremely disordered thinking and behavior that impairs daily functioning and can be disabling. Schizophrenia is treated with antipsychotics. Antipsychotics are psychiatric drugs which are available on prescription and are licensed to treat types of mental health problems whose symptoms include psychotic experiences. These include schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, and some forms of bipolar disorder. There are conventional antipsychotics and atypical antipsychotics. Now dopamine. Dopamine is an important chemical messenger or neurotransmitter involved in reward, motivation, memory, attention, and even regulating body movement. Now here's a video of what is a schizoaffective disorder, what is a schizophrenia, and what are the differences between both. Schizoaffective disorder is a disorder that is basically schizophrenia with also depression or manic episodes um, as well. So schizo schizophrenia, first of all, um, is a brain disorder that affects the development of the brain so that people's thinking and behavior are affected. Um, the main symptoms of schizophrenia um, include delusions where people have fixed false beliefs um, about something, including feeling paranoid that other people are out to hurt them, or feeling grandiose, like um, they have a mission to accomplish. Um, uh, the, the, and these beliefs are not shared by other people in their culture. Um, there are hallucinations where people may um, feel that uh, the, they hear somebody talking to them and other people don't perceive that, or see things that other people don't see. Um, there are disorganized thoughts and behavior which affect how um, people are able to care for themselves and how are they are able to communicate to others. And then there are negative symptoms where people may not have a lot of motivation to do things um, and uh, uh, may have very flat affect um, so that uh, uh, they, they do not seem like the people they were before they became ill. So that's schizophrenia. If you have schizophrenia and you also have periods of two weeks or more of depression, um, or you have periods of manic symptoms where you have increased energy, you talk too much, um, you can't sleep, uh, you're, you have a lot of activity, um, then uh, you, may, you might have schizoaffective disorder. What makes um, uh, the schizophrenia plus uh, mood episodes different than uh, bipolar disorder where you could have uh, mood episodes and have delusions or hallucinations. The, the main uh, difference is that in schizoaffective disorder you have those delusions or hallucinations without depression or without um, that uh, increased uh, mood and increased um, energy that is associated with mania for some of the time. So that schizophrenia is the, the primary diagnosis and then you have mood episodes on top of it. So that's sort of the, the long answer to what is schizoaffective disorder, um, which is uh, still something that in psychiatry we're trying to learn more about. Sometimes people say, um, I No, applications in medicine. Antipsychotic drugs have helped transform the lives with of people with schizophrenia, allowing most to live in the community and many to function independently. Although these drugs are effective in controlling or ameliorating the delusions and, hallucin and hallucinations of psychosis, they do not reduce the cognitive impairment associated with schizophrenia and only minimally alleviate the negative symptoms such as ap apathy and reduce emotional expression. D2 receptor. 
dopamine D2 receptor blockade, which is the primary mechanism of action common to antipsychotics, can produce distressing neurologic side effects such as acute dystonias, Parkinsonism, motor restlessness, and late chorithiotitosis. Second generation agents. The newer second generation agents have reduced these neurologic side effects by adding serotonin 5 hydroxytryptamine type 2A receptor antagonism to D2 receptor antagonism or by substituting partial agonism at the two D2 receptor for the D2 receptor antagonism. These drugs have similar efficacy but differ in side effects. Weight gain is a particularly problematic effect of some second, second generation agents. SEP363856 The SEP363856 molecule is a new compound without significant affinity for D2 or 5-HT2A receptors that mimicked the behavioral effects of D2 receptor antagonist drugs in mice and was found to bind with high affinity to the trace amine-associated receptor 1 and to serotonin 5-HT type 1A and type 1D receptor. Welcome to this video tutorial over antipsychotics. Today, we're going to discuss what exactly these drugs are, what they treat, and how to effectively use them. Be sure to check out our other pharmacology videos for information from other drug classes such as antihypertensives, antimicrobials, and diuretics. Antipsychotics are chemical compounds used to treat a wide variety of psychotic disorders. Examples of these disorders include schizophrenia, bipolar disease, and depressive psychosis. There are also some unscripted uses for antipsychotics, which we'll discuss further on in the video. According to the American Psychiatric Association, schizophrenia is diagnosed as a chronic brain disorder with symptoms that include delusions, lack of motivation, hallucinations, and unusual behaviors. This disorder can be disabling and is characterized by episodes where one is unable to distinguish between what is real and what isn't. There is currently no cure for schizophrenia. However, there is a lot of research that suggests improvement in symptoms with the use of antipsychotics. People with bipolar disorders have mood episodes that vary from one extreme to the other. Periods of mania can cause extreme irritability and risky behaviors, where depressive episodes can lead the person to have loss of energy, fatigue, and a willful purpose. Antipsychotics have also been helpful in reducing the symptoms associated with depressive psychosis. Depressive psychosis is different from regular depressive episodes due to the decreased ability to distinguish reality during times of increased depression. There are also several off-label uses for psychiatric medications. Patients with Tourette's syndrome, Huntington disease, and uncontrollable vomiting have also benefited from antipsychotics. The antipsychotic medications fall into two different groups. The first generation antipsychotics have been around for several decades and more information is available regarding their mechanisms of action, uses, and adverse side effects. Pros and cons. Pros. The drug resulted in significant reductions in both psychosis and negative symptoms. EP363856 may represent, represent a new class of psychotropic agent with a non-D2 receptor binding mechanism of action for the treatment of psychosis in schizophrenia. It is possible that SEP363856 will have other potential therapeutic indications, including cognitive impairment, depression, and substan substance abuse. This remains to be explored. 
Now, the cons are that administration of this drug was associated with some somnolence and gastrointestinal side effects, and neurologic and metabolic side effects were similar to those with placebo. issue applied in Ecuador. Schizophrenia affects more than 21 million people globally and it's more frequent in men than women. But in Ecuador, there is a higher percentage of women that have schizophrenia in relation to men that have schizophrenia. It's around 56% of women that have schizophrenia. Of people with schizophrenia in Ecuador, 56% are women and the other 44% are men. That's what I meant. And currently, schizophrenia has a prevalence of 38% of the total of psychiatric hospitalizations in Ecuador and a prevalence of 21.7% in ambulatory consultia. It's consultation. La esquizofrenia, eh, etimológicamente mente extendida o mente partida, es una enfermedad mental grave y el concepto que actualmente tenemos de este trastorno procede aproximadamente desde hace 100 años. Es una enfermedad mental grave porque compromete, en primer lugar, a múltiples aspectos de eh, las funciones superiores múltiples aspectos de la psicopatología. Compromete el pensamiento y aparecen ideas delirantes, compromete la sensopercepción, aparecen alucinaciones, compromete la voluntad, los impulsos, la psicomotricidad. Y es una enfermedad mental también grave porque, a diferencia de lo que ocurre en la depresión, cada vez que aparece uno de los brotes de enfermedad, la personalidad del enfermo se va alterando. Se caracteriza por la presencia también de síntomas que denominamos negativos, la carencia de iniciativa, la carencia de voluntad, las dificultades de atención. En cuanto al origen del trastorno, es ciertamente aún desconocido. Sin embargo, la investigación en los últimos años ha dado, eh, se han producido avances en la investigación de los últimos años muy importantes en cuanto al origen de esta patología. Bueno, los estudios de neuroimagen estructural, por una parte, han detectado que muy, eh, muchas regiones del cerebro pueden eh, estar alteradas como consecuencia de que se produjo durante la vida intrauterina alteraciones en el desarrollo cerebral. También se han observado, mediante estudios de neuroimagen funcional, muchas alteraciones en determinadas funciones cerebrales que se están describiendo en la normalidad, en la normalidad también, y alteraciones en la atención, alteraciones en, el, en la afectividad, etc. De la misma manera, muchos estudios genéticos están detectando muchos genes candidatos a, eh, que están implicados en el desarrollo cerebral y cuyas variaciones est eh, pueden estar implicadas en la alteración de la esquizofrenia. En cuanto a los tratamientos, también se han producido avances muy importantes. En los próximos años, la investigación mediante fármacos, fundamentalmente ayudada por la farmacogenética y la farmacogenómica, va a lograr aislar, detectar qué fármaco es el que un determinado paciente 
en función de su perfil.